Today we're going to be doing a video on the TCM U2 calibration and some other features. First thing is talking about the probe. This is a 50N probe and 50N means that there is about 12 and a half pounds of force of load required on the probe itself to activate it and give the correct reading. So I'm going to screw what we call the puck off the end of the device and this has a spring inside it so when you press down there is a resistance to that spring but the second and more important thing is that on the diamond tip uh, this sticks out about a sixteenth of an inch when you are doing a test it will contact the part and if I show you here in fact under measuring if I just sit it on the part you can see here that it's trying to do a test but it's just sitting here and it won't give an accurate reading what's happening is that the device is recognizing that it's, the tip is touching the part and so it turns on the actuator inside to start the vibration but we haven't applied the correct load so what you've got to do is to put the probe on the part and immediately press down to give the accurate uh, value now there's nothing displayed because I haven't got this calibrated but so it's a two-step process so when you press down you will see that the movement of the this is with the, the diamond tip sitting you have to complete the press down so that now the face of the puck is bottoming out on the part being tested as you can see so with the puck attached and you can see there was 12 and a half pounds of force you know there is some effort required to do this to apply that load I'll screw the puck back on again. Another feature of the puck is we can screw this side off, which is for flat surfaces, and there is a, a rigid rubber base to it, so it makes nice contact. And I'll just screw this end here off. And this can be reversed, and what there is is two grooves cut into this, V groove, so a larger V groove for a larger diameter. So now it would be sitting nice and perpendicular on that part. And then a smaller V groove. So this can be reversed and screwed on. So whilst we're talking about this kind of UCI or ultrasonic puck, we'll look at the 10N probe. Just screw this back on again. I won't attach it to the device, but it looks exactly the same as a 50N. The difference is when the puck is screwed off, this requires about two and a half pounds of force. So sitting on the part, I can very lightly and quite easily just press down with this because it requires very little effort. The same thing still applies with the, the puck attached. It doesn't have to be, you could actually do it without this in a free form way. There is the resistance in the spring, press down, and then the secondary resistance must be taken up, which is in the diamond tip and the probe um, you know, vibrating rod pushing up inside the body. The third kind of probe we have is a D-type probe, and this extends the use of this tester. This is a rebound type uh, probe where inside of the device is a thing we call the impact body. This is grabbed by grippers inside, it's fired at the part and it bounces off the acceleration off the part is measured by a coil inside of here and uh, it is primarily used for non-ferrous materials. You can do steels but much thicker steels than can be done with an ultrasonic tester. Uh, cast irons that can't be done with a, a, an ultrasonic test are ideal for this uh, kind of probe that plugs directly into this device as an option. So let's look at doing calibration. I'm just going to back out of this. We go to the calibration, whoops, down, and I hit the select key. Right now you can see here that I have HRC, HB, HV. U1, which is a user-definable um, hardness scale, and then across here we have uh, the different kinds of materials. This ST is just for steel, this would be alloy steel, stainless steel, and then two user-definable ones, so you could make this one here, for example, titanium, and then the U1 for some other very exotic material as well. So there's no calibration stored in the device right now, so the little box is grey, uh, with the, the outline just shown. If I hit the select key, it takes me here to the menu choice and I want to hit edit because I want to define the calibrations. Um, and by default, when the calibrations are set up, it will show 200, 500 and 700 just as values. 
um, this code on the right hand side is the a number that is stored inside the probe <coughs> that varies depending on the probe type uh, that we're going to then calibrate the unit to. So looking at the different um, test pieces that we have here, this first one is a HRC test block. It's 23.17 and on the side of the block it shows the, the number. I've written it on here for so you guys can see uh, what the hardest value is. So this is our low end one. Then we have one at 47.3 and then at one at 64.31. So we have three test blocks. As you can see here, three test uh, values can be entered. And the reason is that uh, ultrasonic testing is not a linear path. So it's not a straight line from point A to point B. There is a curve. And so we can get accurate tests between a range. We use an intermediary block so that we're now getting accurate tests uh, in the range. Now with uh, test blocks or in fact any material, it's just almost impossible to get an exact hardness across the whole surface of the block. So each block has a tolerance on it. And this tolerance on this block here is one HRC. This is the test certificate that comes with the test blocks. And as you can see here, there were different readings that were taken. And we have 47.2, 47.57, and so on. So the range of hardness uh, measured across this little test block on a very expensive bench tester is one. So there's a tolerance of one in the block itself. <clears throat> so to set this up, <clears throat> we're going to go with the softest test block first. It doesn't really make any difference so long as you either have the hardest first and the softest last. <clears throat> Um, or vice versa. To set this up we hit the edit key and we go scroll down to the edit button and now you can see that the black background has changed and it's got the, uh, not the dark blue background has changed and so now the value is shown here as 2. I use the cursor control keys to change the value so this is now 0. I hit the edit button it jumps to the next value and I can see this is 23.17 so I want to hit 2, hit the edit button, 3. Now we only have to point uh, one decimal place even though the block is 0 0.17. So we're going to put this value in as 0 0.2 to round it up. Hit edit. And when we do this you can see the code value zeroes out and we've now got a blue background. We can scroll down to the next number. So we're going to hit the edit button and rather than showing the keystrokes here we're just going to zoom in closer on the display so what you see you can see what's going on and I will be telling you what the keys are. So using the down arrow button we're going to zero this out and I'm going to go through this quicker now. Edit and this test block is a 47.3 so putting the numbers in for seven and three. Hit the edit button again and now we'll scroll down to the last value and I'll change it. So I hit the edit key, choose edit, make this value zero and because the calibration block is 64.31 we're going to put in 64.3, change this to six edit for three. Now all of the codes are showing as being zero so I'm going to now move up to the top one which is our softest block 23.17 and when I'm doing this test I want to make sure my block is rung to a heavier base. Don't sit the block on a wooden table or a, even a sheet metal steel table. It needs to be on something more solid. So I'm doing this actually on a reversed uh, rebound test block. The reason for this is they want to remove any chance for errors. We already have a, the variation and tolerance in the block so I want to make sure that there is no chance for vibration passing through the test block itself into a soft material underneath. So I've got this sitting very very rigidly on top of the, my uh, heavier base. I do my test and when I press down I'm using both fingers around the outside as I had shown earlier and the motion is take the load of the spring and then continue down until the device beeps. If you just press down to the first step you will get an inaccurate reading as I had shown you earlier. 
So it's showing a code now of 1647, and this is just a code number that says that code value is a, going to be stored with the device once the calibrations are done. You never do one test because there could be user error, and we want to average the tests, in fact, uh, over a number of tests to give us the most accurate result. So I'm going to move the puck, do a second test, and what I'm looking for to see that the number doesn't change too much. That went from 1647 to 1642, so it's a tiny little variation. And in fact, it repeated there, so I'm going to say that's good. So I'm going to scroll down to the next one. All I have to do is place that block on my heavier block, and I'm ringing it to it, so now it's seen as being one material. But of course, I'm just testing on top. And I'm going to go down and complete the test three times here. One, two, three, and I'll do four in this case. So very little variation and change. So that's that block done. Last one, 64.3. I scroll down to that value and do a series of tests making sure that my test is done correctly with that two-step, take a load of the spring, secondary pressure, and now I've got my uh, calibration done. So to store this in the device, we hit the back button. And we hit save, well, no would be to hit this button, yes is to hit this button, we say yes, and it takes a few seconds and it's now stored the calibration inside the probe. And you can see here that the um, block has changed to a solid block, meaning that we've calibrated for steel and HRC. We could continue on and do this with Brunel test blocks or with Vickers test blocks, uh, other materials, but we're now going to show how accurate this is by going back and then we want to go up to measuring. We hit select. We make sure that our device is showing ST, which is for steel and HRC, we can change the HRC value here by choosing a different scale, which would be HB, Vickers and so on, but of course we'd have to have the, the device calibrated for those. We've only got it calibrated for HRC right now, so I select that. And on the material type, we don't set it from this screen, we actually set it from the settings area. So if I go up here to... So yes, you'd be under the settings area to change the uh, value for the material, and this is here, steel. So you'd go down and change the value for steel. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go back out and I'm going to now show uh, a test. So there's calibration here. Is so we have scrolled back to measuring from the settings area. And if I go now into measuring, I hit the select button. And what I'm going to do here is to put up my test block. This is the 23.17. I just ring it to the part, press down with that two-step motion and my average of all of those tests is 23.4 on a 23.2 test block. So you can see it's extremely accurate. Let's go to the hard one now. I do a test. I'm going to delete all of these. So we've gone back to our start point. No tests are done. One test. Two. And you can, as I had said before, this is averaging. And the test block is a 64.31 with a tolerance of one on it as well. And we're getting a 64.5. So you can see the device is very, very accurate. So there we are, uh, how to calibrate the unit, some steps to, to uh, do a test correctly. Very simple, and you can calibrate to your own uh, parts later on. They don't need to be test specimens like this, all you would need is three parts that were of different hardness of your own material, say a stainless steel, and of known hardness, just do the three tests and then you've calibrated the unit. Thank you.